it has to be. And this is what our master and teacher Jesus has always offered in his in his expression of of the way of the heart. You know, you know, a new commandment I give you: love ye one another. The fulfillment of the law, if you will, you know that that whole foundation of love itself. So the ego eventually is forgotten, rather than uh, relinquished. <laughs> so much. <laughs> yes, that's great. That's wonderful. Yeah, so true. Because it is in that recognition, in that singularity of that instant, that the forgetting, the self-forgetting, occurs without any without any effort. Because it's, if you look at it, guess what? Poof. It's like that was the first mistake. When I looked and at the idea and bang, poof, a whole universe was created with worlds and solar systems and galaxies. Yeah, so, so here I am looking at the original mad idea, the tiny mad idea. And because of the power of love, the power of my mind, because I am as God created me, that whole possibility, which never occurred, but entered in as an idea, <laughs> now has been laughed away. Because the world is over long ago. Like Jesus said, it's finished. And it is. It's over. We're just, you could say that we're really just kind of in the, the, the residual ripples of the, seeming disturbance that never really took place but that's what we're doing is merely looking on ancient history we're looking upon the past and watching how it is that we let it all go and that's why you could use so many metaphors one i like to share is the one of the movie where you're sitting there watching a movie pass me the popcorn please because this is a real drama this is a <laughs> real you know edge of the cedar because i'm up here going wow and i'm about ready to jump into the movie and get all up in it you know <laughs> because it's so intense oh let me get afraid oh they're gonna get me oh no and i'm pounding on the screen and i can't seem to get anywhere with it because it's over it's over Yes. And, oh, yes, like Brother Russ shared. It's like the end of the movie's on the DVD before you even put it in the player. I love that. <laughs> that that was the holy thought that just kind of just pulled the rug right out of that. It is over. It's done. And we're just simply watching how it was that we let it go. And through this process of forgiveness, which is the only thing we need to employ in this present moment, just forgive it. Just forgive anything you thought was going on. Look out and see with the Holy Spirit. Look with his eyes. He looks with you. When you invite him to look, he shows you that it's not real. And he will demonstrate it for you. He shows up in, in, the, in the dream sequence in many ways, depending on what your need is, because he works with you where you think you're at. And so you just need to trust that he's guiding you and has always been guiding you like lesson 135 states in i guess the second page or so it's a one of the longer lessons it states that what would you not accept if you but knew who plans every event past present and to come for your good <laughs> yes yes indeed yes well, gosh, I just thank you so much, brother, for sharing in this. A um, few more things I'd like to cover a little bit. Um, one is this, this, this going back to the recognition. And I keep hearing, and you, you, you said, if you'll just see. And, of course, when we looked at the tiny mad idea, we appeared to, uh, for a moment and a flash, to, to, to have a dream that wasn't so. Um, but there's that rec there's seeing. So I'd like to look at this idea of seeing and, and, and maybe express to our listeners the, the power of seeing. And you, for, for example, there's a vision itself. It's so powerful. The Course in Miracles, there's, I rememberized a quote. I don't remember exactly where it's at in the text. It says, vision, because of its strength, pulls the will into its service, which is love, and causes the mind to concur. 
vision, because of its strength, pulls the will into its service and causes the mind to concur. And I don't know if a lot out there has actually uh, in, in looked into this this idea of seeing a, as a spiritual path, but it it is a seeing in itself. Jesus Himself in the both the New Testament and the Course of Miracles mentioned, "Behold, watch." Watch, and he'd say, um, at least thine eye be single, thy body should be full of light. He said, watch, he says, look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Look up, for your redemption, redemption draweth nigh. So the power of seeing is incredible in this recognition. So in each moment, I remind myself, do you see it? Do you see it? Oh, it's there beloved it is so it's shining in the reflection of all life 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 is everywhere life is the very seeing itself <laughs> and so the, the the power and strength of our vision in christ that's what i wanted to express just that the the awesomeness of recognition alone so hallelujah I what is the question? You know what the question is. <laughs> it's the original question. The first question that raised doubt in your holy mind. What am I? Yes. And the answer is obvious in the truth of your identity as God created you. You are the Holy Son of God. Perfect, healed, and whole eternal abstract and forever one yes so when you look upon the world the, what you seem to see with your body's eyes because remember Christ's vision sees not the world as you perceive it recognize if you can remember you will be way ahead you will save so much time and you will be so at peace because it merely asks the question, what am I? And you can look at any moment and see where your mind is at in relationship to what the answer to that question is. And truly, it's when you ask the teacher who's been given you by your Father, the answer, the voice for God himself, the Holy Spirit who's in your holy mind, he will tell you what you are if you but ask. And you are asking. And everything in this entire perceptive uh experience is merely asking you the same question what am i i am that i am <laughs> so it's it's a constant seems like a constant recognition of your identity because your problems are stemmed from your identity confusion see because anytime i'm not certain of what i am i'm going to step into fear because the present moment of perfect trust is where your identity is. And that's where we are safe and need no defense. But when you forget, where are you now? But in the past. Because <laughs> there's no time. <laughs> and so the past merely asks that question. And all you need to do is recognize that the only answer that you're interested in is the truth. And just be willing to allow the truth to be true. And um, you're free. You're at peace. Because you're whole and complete now. <laughs> well, how glorious is that? You know, brother, I, I will say that since you arrived here in Colorado Springs, there has been a an invitation that has been accepted and stepped into. And... Now, with clear certainty, I can honestly say that I did not share in this certainty before you arrived. And I'm thankful that this transmission of love's presence is actually occurring now in our relationship, our devotional relationship to, to love, to Him who is our Christ. <laughs> 